Hey, Hickok 45, and I'm mostly unarmed. What did I hear? Did I hear something? Yeah. There's another bad guy. <laughs> and a bad cowboy. <laughs> I think we're in. We're not. We had one more round. Good job. <laughs> Yes, Hickok 45. It's really better to be, uh, in my opinion, almost armed than to be unarmed. And that might be how I would describe myself if this is all I had. Almost armed. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the shooting table. Take a look at this thing. All right, this is my gun. I've had it a long time. North American Arms. It didn't come from Buds. It didn't come from John. It didn't. <laughs> I didn't find it in the ground. It came from me about 20 years ago, I purchased it, all right? Now, for all you folks who have been asking <laughs> for a review or a video on a North American Arms Mini Revolver, I'm sorry we're so late getting around to it. Uh, you know, I mean, we eventually get to everything. Uh, so I know you must think I'm absolutely crazy because uh, we've had a lot of requests to do them and I've had this uh, for over 20 years. So go figure. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the reason, I will figure, here's the reason. It's really hard to shoot. I know I talk about small guns being hard to shoot, and I'm, I'm a fan of small guns. Here's a little P380 you know, car. I can shoot that gun, even with my large hands. Uh, and so can John, large hands. But these things, they take it down to a level that is just different. It's a extreme. And then this is the 22 Magnum mini revolver from North American Arms. And I have the larger grip on it. Now these are the grips that came on it and were on it up until about a week ago. I have been putting it off uh, mainly because I can't shoot the thing really. It's almost impossible to get your hand on it and shoot it. And, I, and I, whenever I think about it and, and hear your request, I would see your request. Uh, yeah, we ought to get that out and do a video. But man, it, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, it's just going to be a demonstration of how you can't shoot the dumb things. If you have hands that are reasonably side, large hands at all, it's really hard to shoot. I mean, it's, boy, you've got to, I figured out how to do it, but it's really, really difficult. And it makes it uh, basically uh, talk about being almost armed. You really are virtually unarmed with it without, without this grip. If your hands are as big as mine, okay, there is a limit. Uh, to how much a person can adapt or adjust to a small gun. But I have seen these grips, I don't know, 20 years. I've just never had one. And I never see them for sale anywhere that I noticed. And I finally said, i got to order those stupid things. So I went to the North American Arms website and just ordered a, a set of them. And I installed them last weekend. That's why we're here, okay? Because now you can actually grab the gun <laughs> and you can hold it and shoot it. Now it makes it bigger though. So then you don't have a miniature gun anymore. But the way they work is you take these grips off. I'm not going to, it would take a little time. I don't need to do that. Maybe someone else has a demonstration of how to install them and take them off or whatever. But I, I guess we could do that sometime. But uh, you take those off and you put little plates there. You can see the tops of them uh, in their place. And then you install this. And uh, you got push buttons there. And once you do it right, then it folds up like that. And then it, it is pretty small. And of course, it would fit in your pocket. Now, I, I feel, I told John before we started, I feel a little weird that my pocket like that loaded. But that's what they're designed for. And there are some safety uh, issues here, or precautions and things. One of them is, of course, when you have this closed up, the trigger guard, the trigger is, it's a holster essentially. Okay, so it covers the trigger. Then also, you've got a single action. That hammer has to be cocked all the way back before, you know, you can fire it. And of course, you can't fire if you can't get to the trigger, right? Like it, like it is. There you go. Carry it like that. Cock. <laughs> now, theoretically, that would be not totally unsafe, but it would be unsafe, I would think. So you've got to get that out of the way so you can get to the trigger. You wouldn't cock it with a close up like that. I was just showing you that, okay? Uh, so you got a long hammer pull and all that. And then also, before I unload it, there's a notch between each uh, cylinder, if you notice that, or each chamber. You see that notch? You have that with some of the old percussion revolvers. So you can turn that to where and get the hammer. You gotta pull the trigger to do it, so you gotta be careful. Okay, now it's resting in that notch between the, the cases. So if you drop it or take a hammer and hit the back of that hammer, you know, it's not gonna fire. All right, so that's pretty safe. And then, and then you close this up, 
and that should be safe to carry just about any way all right you still want to be careful all right so the north american arms mini revolver that's what this is and i'll show you how you reload it as i gab a little bit about the these things you uh you push on the little rod there the end of it it's got a little button you pull it out okay and then the cylinder basically just falls out and now if they're stuck which they typically are you use this to just punch them out okay so as you can see a speed load uh, is uh, out of the question with this thing <laughs> be tough to do rapid fire uh with 10 rounds wouldn't it okay so so then you reload it and you have to have the cylinder out to, to load it so you think uh old colt single action is slow to load this baby you got to take the cylinder out now the old uh, smith and wesson revolvers were kind of like that from back in the 1850s you know they came up with the first 22 you know caliber cartridge and the little revolvers back then and uh it was a little bit like this you took the cylinder out of course they were tip up and all that but you had to take it out to reload it now and be careful i got a loaded cylinder here sometimes you got to just move that hammer a little bit get it in there and then pop this back in Remember, it's a single action, so nothing's going to happen if that hammer is not cocked. That's one of the differences for those of you who are kind of new to firearms. With a single action, you're, you're in pretty good shape if that hammer is not cocked. All right. Now, if it's resting against a round and then it gets hit pretty hard, you know, you know what can happen. We've demonstrated that. We've demonstrated a lot of stupid things, haven't we? Let's see. Now, be careful. Get the jacket around a little bit. This is the kind of thing you just very carefully load it, take your time. And you make sure you point it in a safe direction as you're making certain that hammer is on that not in the notch between the the cartridges because now I've got live rounds in there see so it's even more important all right so it's resting not on a cartridge which you know rimfire 22 magnum okay now I would suggest uh, I'm not seeing anybody explain how to do this or anything but uh, you close it up push the buttons and I would just keep my hand back here away from the, the muzzle and just push it down you know into it you know keep your hand you know obviously some of your first inclination is to grab the gun have your hand in front of the barrel and all that you don't want to do that okay so now the trigger's covered up hammer's not cocked it's resting in a safe place so it should be safe to carry it almost however you want it to all right so that that's your choice though uh, I'm still not 100% crazy about the configuration but that's it all right North American arms uh, again, these came around in about the, the early 70s, I think. Uh, the company, uh, they've, they've changed names or they've, they've, they've had trouble, I think, over the years, off and on. But uh, they, they, they come back. Uh, I think they're, they start out under a different name. Were they from Provo, Utah or somewhere? And then uh, Freedom Arms, I believe I read, actually designed these things. And if you know about Freedom Arms, they are famous for these high, high, high quality single action revolvers. And, uh, and the North American Arms, you know, uh, made them, the, you know, names and bought the rights or something, I don't know, all that kind of thing you can read about if you want the, the total history of it. The main point is, even though they're small, they're kind of weird, for some of you, it's a gun you just hold your nose, don't want one of those, <laughs> not that. Uh, I was telling John, they remind me a little bit of the... Uh, uh, the Bond Arms Derringers. That's another firearm that not a lot of people maybe, well, a lot of people do buy them. They're pretty popular, but a lot of people also would not want one because they have uh, two shots. Yeah, okay. Not, you know, not a serious gun or whatever. You know. and, but those things, you recall in our video, I, I was uh, praising the quality of those things. And I, I, did, I still got the Snake Slayer. I like it. You know, I'm going to hang on to that. Uh, because they're so well made, they're, they're neat. These guns are kind of that way. I've had this gun again over 20 years. Why do I even have it? You know, it's well made. It, it does what it's supposed to do. You have, you get the feeling that it's really quality. Okay. I mean, if nothing else, it just feels like it's well made and it works. Now it may be too small for you. You might not like the action at all. There's lots of reasons not to like it, but uh, it does seem to function well. It always has. And it appears to be well made. I, I'm impressed with them. I'll have to say, it is kind of weird now. For the first time in over 20 years, I can actually get a grip on one of these things. <laughs> Whoa! Gonna shoot back. <laughs> yeah, 
that little grip is uh, a lifesaver. Uh, I think it kind of shoots below. Got it on the bottom. <laughs> it shoots a little bit below point. It shoots low for me. What I'm trying to say. Yeah, you got to hold up at least with mine. Here we go. Five shots. That's what you've got. Now it's like a black powder uh, weapon because uh, you know once you fire it, you got some work to do, don't you? You got some work to do to reload it and all that. So make sure you never get into a uh, an engagement with more than five bad guys. Uh, that's be my advice. <laughs> we'll load it once more. I, I really feel bad <laughs> about it so long getting this thing out. We've teased you with this. It was in one of the rapid fire videos. It was under the, the hood, if you recall that video. Uh, where I don't know what that part of the car engine was, but we had one lying in there for those who've seen the rapid fire and everybody should have seen those. And then in the 500 Magnum, Smith & Wesson Magnum, I believe it was on the table with the 500 you know, Magnum revolver. So millions of you have seen this revolver, okay? <laughs> you've just not seen a video with it. You've not seen me shoot it. All right, so we're clear. We've shot them all. Let's open her up. Again, this is the reloading process. Pull that out. Cylinder comes out. I mean, it's it's a cool little gun. It's almost like it reminds me of those miniature guns you see at the big gun shows. I don't know if you've ever been to an NRA convention or a really big gun show. There's someone who uh, sells those. Well, they're online too, I guess. They're they're called miniature guns, and they take a lot of the classic firearms and they just make little miniatures of them, and they're actually workable, as I understand. They fire and everything. Uh, this almost reminds me of one of those. Just really well made. Let's put some more in here. This is 22 Magnum. They come in 22 long rifle, 22 shorts, I think. All kinds of calibers now and barrel lengths. If you look at their website, they've got they've got everything you can imagine now. They've really expanded the line. Back when I bought this, I don't think there was much else available other than just the mini revolvers. But uh, they're pretty cool. I know an officer uh, who actually... Uh, had one of these things as a 22 long rifle or short whatever it was uh, and he was off duty and uh, encountered some characters uh, robbing uh, some old couple and I don't remember the exact it's like about 20 years ago and uh, he chased them down was going to try to arrest them even though he was off duty whatever and he didn't he should have had a bigger gun yeah <laughs> but he had one of these things the guy attacked him, and he ended up uh, shooting one of the guys. Killed him. Killed him dead. 22, uh, and uh, you know, so 22 can be almost armed, as I said earlier on. Uh, this is half half joking about being almost armed with one of these things, but in a way, it's not a big joke because you might be armed, but you are kind of barely armed with one of these babies. And one of the things I was going to point out too. It's loaded, but when you get this in there, and I've got it between the cylinders so it's safe to, I'm going to close it up, I'm going to hand back here. This is, you know, I'm, I'm bad mouthing my own gun here, I know, but I, you're going to catch me carrying that P380 before you're going to catch me carrying this. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. I'll just say it quickly, okay? You're going to catch me carrying probably even a J-frame before I carry this, all right? You know, so... To me, it's only shootable when you get this grip on it, and when you get this grip on it, it's not all that much smaller than some other much better choices, okay. but it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I think some people collect these things, and they may not even shoot them. So when you pull, you don't have to push the buttons when you open it up, so it's easier and safer to just open it up. Well, let's take a shot at something here. Oh. Oh man, I ought to shoot at the gong, I guess. Let me shoot at it. Now, it shoots low, so I'll hold high. Might not be able to hear it if we hit it. <laughs> Got him! That's it. I'm just going to shoot one. I can't believe it. <laughs> Very shootable. If you think uh, that's something that you want, <laughs> have at it. Uh, they sell a ton of them, apparently. You see them in all the gun shops. And I don't know why, I just had to have one, uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago, whenever it was. And I'll keep it, even though I'm bad-mouthing it a little bit. It's not something I'm probably going to carry. But uh, the thing that, again, that impresses me is that they, they work. 
and uh, when you pull the hammer back I don't know that it feels like a Colt you know <laughs> or anything but it, it I mean it really does it locks up and it is solid and it's just a, a piece of quality really just like the Bond Arms Derringers I put them in the same category except those might have a little more uh, utility a value I don't know that's, that's up for a debate I suppose but I just like guns that are made well you know and that that kind of lock up strongly and uh, positively and they do exactly what they're supposed to do you can criticize them for being maybe too small underpowered or for a lot of things dangerous even uh, have many better choices than this there's lots of reasons to criticize them but the darn things do what they're supposed to do and uh, and they're well made and on the grip, I won't elaborate a lot on that. Spend another 40 minutes talking about that. I, I like the guns without the grip. They're neat little guns. They're just cool. Uh, but they're almost unshootable, I think, uh, without this grip. And then again, the, the, the quandary there, the dilemma is, once you put that grip on there, much better to shoot, feel much better. But then you've got a gun, you've got a package, and we're clear, we've shot all five. You've got a package that is just, while it's pretty small, you know, there, there's there's several guns. LCP Ruger, uh, the P380 there, not much bigger, you know. So those are choices we all have to make, don't we, in order to be almost armed, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, don't go into combat with one of these. Life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute, and here at SDI, we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get seriously. Can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always gonna be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.